welcome back to the channel well today we're doing an EV installation EV charger um, as you can guess from uh, the title we're going to be showing you how you can charge your vehicle using the power of the Sun to effectively charge in your vehicle for free we're going to be using the Hypervolt 2.0 we've got it in ultra black because I think that's the sexiest color and um, we will take you through the whole installation and how you can actually connect it via your solar panels and charge your car for free once you get to the end of the video, if you like what you see and you find it very informative, please like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. There should be a link appearing down in the bottom corner here. So if you just click that on a desktop, it should take you straight through to subscribe. So thank you very much for watching and let's get to it and I'll show you what we're doing. Right, so this is the location of the charger. This is where the customer has asked. We're inside the garage, so we don't have to worry about the elements. It is fully waterproof, of course, but it's just a preferred method. The customer will be parking the car in this side of the garage and the charger will be here. It's a tethered charger, 5 metre lead, so you can just plug it straight into the front of the car. So we are going roughly this sort of area. I will have to move this unit over slightly for the garage door if need be. But um, as long as we're getting the 1.4 height, which is required in regulations, we're going to be laughing. So if you come over by your late, the cable route then is going to be up this wall. We're going to have to tidy up this slightly. We're going to be clipping across the beams. And then we have uh, access over to the consumer unit there. Um, yeah, we're going to be running in EV Ultra cable. This is like basically designed for this sort of installation. You have your three cores inside and a data core as well to run for the CTs which connect to your electric electrical meter. So yeah, that's that's basically the route. I'll show you the consumer unit now and what we'll be doing there. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. That is the existing consumer unit there. We're not going to be using that. We will be coming off here. This is for the solar PV. It's a two-way unit with a generation meter. Um, and we'll be coming off there. But basically what we're doing, I am changing it for a four-way unit. I will be putting the solar PV back into it. I will be putting the generation meter back in on the DIN rail. Well, then I have got a type A RCBO, which will be supplying the, the Hypervolt um, through the EV cable. So that's what's going to be happening there. That quick unit swap over and then uh, connect the unit up. So we'll show you now how uh, we go about it. As we're coming off the um, solar PV fuse board, obviously you've got two forms of supply there. You've got your AC side coming from the grid. But you've also got your generating supply from the roof so you do have to isolate it because it's basically a dual supply um the inverter is just above us here in this um little attic space in the garage so i'll be isolating it there and make sure that i'm turning off the ac isolator and the dc isolator they're all double pole which will kill any back feed down the line so i'm not going to get shocked i will probably lock these off as well just in case. we've ripped out the old consumer unit there um, I've had to trim the coven slightly and the door frame to get the new unit in because it is a slightly larger, larger unit I'm using the CP fuse box consumer unit and that will slot nicely in there now we'll get a bit of decorators mate around the edges if need be um, I pulled through the CT ready to monitor the grid and I have upgraded the main feed because it was on a 2.5 cable I'm upgrading it to a 6 mil for this unit it will be fed off a 40 amp mcb from this not on the rcd side to here um our cable our ev cable is actually a four mil cross-sectional area so we'll be downgrading that to a 32 amp it's only a short run it's about 10 meters top so that's as far as we got so if you follow me then what we're going to be doing as well i have got the saying a rod up here now with the super rods push it that way because all of this area up here 
all this area is just like a little attic space. And fingers crossed. Like I like I said earlier, I should hopefully get the rod across here as far as possible. If not, Lincoln's just gonna get up, stick his head in, and then um even use another rod with a hook on and then pull it through. Tag the cable on. And yeah, that's uh, basically 90% of the cable route done. So uh, we'll get on with that. Now you're just going to get these knockouts done now on the consumer unit. You get this that end all sorted first. I'm using the intermittent fire grommets as well. Um, you know, just fire safety as as you need to do. Another little tip as well. Like consumer units and RCBOs come with these little silica gels. You know, like you get in your shoes. Um, bung them in your tool bag. And it keeps the moisture out of your tool bag and stops your tool from rusting. So, top tip there from A1. I've actually stole it off um, R. Davis Electrical and there's a few others as well. So, um, yeah, give them credit for that. There's a, few, a lot of people have mentioned that. But just in case you didn't know. So, yeah, we're going to get that done now and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> By Joey got it, look at that. <laughs> what a little legend he is. Learned from the best today one electrical services. It's fantastic rod in there, so we've we've got, a, got our rods across now. We've set the, the cable up on the on the cable spool. So this is what I'll be using. It's um well it's my favourite super rod attachment at the moment. It's like the Chinese finger trap. I did mention it in the last video, I ain't gonna mention it in every video because I love it. But look at that, that, that ain't coming off. And it was a bit dubious, but it is just enough girth on it, all girth, just to um, get onto that EV Ultra cable. So, yeah, I'm going to give that a pull from the other side now, and um, fingers crossed it should come straight through. So just a quick uh, insight to what we've done here. So we've got our main main supply into the main switch, which obviously comes out into our 
bus bar here which feeds our corresponding circuits then so we've got a 32 amp RCBO type A this is going to be feeding our EV charger the hypervolt so that's double pole over neutral these are our earths obviously all the ends are ferruled because they wanted to on the EV cable because it's stranded this is the 20 amp fuse then the MCB for the solar so that's obviously fed off the bus bar then comes out of that into the bottom of this generation meter and from the generation meter to the inverter i'm saying it's fed this way but in fact this actually runs backwards with the solar so it's coming from the inverter into this meter from the meter into here and then back down the bus bar because it's going back to the grid but anyway that's the setup there um it was not the neatest of installs i will admit you know I just don't like small boards so trying to make things neat and they don't always work out but as neat as I could get it and then we've got the data cable then this is what comes down the EV Ultra cable that is way good into the CTs the CT is then fed across here which will then be cut connected onto the just clipped around like so around the main tail of the house and that's basically that this end i've just got a bit of making good to do around the edges here where i have to trim the door frame so i will get some decorators cork in there and then wet wipes and then just have a cleaner so yeah we're on to a winner at the moment what more could we ask for the job's going swimmingly the sun's shining coffee and biscuits it's a good day to be alive Right, late. Why was the penguin's head so cold? I don't know. Because he was wearing an ice cap. <laughs> <laughs>
beautiful. So this is basically where the magic happens. Because we're using the EV Ultra cable, you've got your data line running straight through the center of it. Basically what this does, this will connect now into this little unit here, like so. Nice and straightforward. Like that. And then you've just got a push fit connection. Yeah, it's connected to the motherboard. So what, what that does now, that connects to the CTs that I showed you the other end. Your CT wraps around your main line of the property. It's a bi-directional CT, so what we're doing now is monitoring your current going in and out of the property. If you don't have PV, of course, you've only got the current coming in. So, you know, you're just charging your car and getting charged for it. But with this, because it's bi-directional, it's measuring how much power your solar panels are making. So if you've got a bit of a difference there or you're, you know, you're making more solar, solar power than you're actually using or importing from the grid, it will monitor that, send it to here through this little cable to the motherboard. Your hypervolt charger is then thinking, oh, right, we've got excess energy from the sun. Let's wrap this charger up so it will go to full full volt. Well, not full voltage, but it'll go full whack, and it will charge your solar uh, charge your car purely off the sun. And then when when it starts to get dark outside and you're not making as much, this will slow itself back down. So you can do a setting on here to optimize solar charging. So the more solar you're making, the faster your car is charging. Or you can even have it so it only charges off the sun. But that's basically how this works. And um, to be honest, I think it's the future of charging. There's no no other way, you know, of being 100% green. You've got an electric car already. You're saving the environment, and then you're charging it off the sun. So one more do you want? But as these installations go, we're not far off now. I've got the cables connected. I've got the CDs connected. I've just got to turn it all on the other end. Get the cover on here, obviously first, and then we'll do the commissioning and testing. stage which is the commission inside I'm using the Metro EVS tester basically you just plug your charger your new EV charger into there and then you plug your MFT multifunction tester into there do your vi various tests you get your ZS do your RCD testing basically simulate a fault to trip it make sure everything's working correctly for the certification so that's the last stage of that and then once this is done we're good to go and then uh, we will charge the people. Right, so there we are, all done for the day, all wired, fitted, tested, and certified online. So I'll be applying for the OLEV grant. I will do a video on applying for the grant shortly, just so people can see the, the Romeo that everyone's got to go through, um, and all the little hoops you've got to jump. But um, yeah, it's been a good installation. You can now charge your car, and you can charge it using the energy from the sun, so basically for free. Um, any questions just leave them in the comments and as always please like subscribe and um, take care of yourselves ta -da.